Hey class, Jim here. Welcome to fall of 2022. I will briefly go over the layout of the course here so that you have a sense of how to navigate. The first thing we see when we come into our course is the announcement area. So these announcements will be released weekly. Uh, some of them will have to do with uh, what is due this week. Uh, quite frequently, I will have a weekly video that will talk about content and give you some instruction. So here is our first announcement. It's just a welcome to the class, a link to the syllabus, a link to the schedule, a couple of videos on how to navigate the online software that we'll use called MyLab Math, and then if and then this video will be right here. So let's take a look at this week one announcement. This is what most of our announcements will look like. It will give you an idea of what homework is due for the week. Uh, typically, we are going to have homework assignments due for each section and quizzes for each section. The homework for each section is done in my lab math, as are the quizzes. And then the discussions are going to take place through D2L. Here's an announcement on class introductions, and if we click on that link right there, it will take us to our class Padlet, and if you double click on the desktop there, you can enter a little bio of yourself, you can enter a, you can upload a photo or a video. So that's really helpful so that uh, we can get to know each other. All right, so if we click on content here, that's going to give us a table of contents of the entire course. So let's go over there. And if we click on the 15 week course schedule link right here, this is going to show us a breakdown week by week of what is due. Uh, let's see up here in the getting started module. This is going to be where you can find the syllabus and the schedule. The most important document for the course is probably the schedule. We're going to stick to the schedule very carefully. So printing this out or having it readily available is going to be super important. So it tells us everything that we're doing for the whole fall semester. Uh, two sections this week, three for week two, and etc. So make sure you have this at, at close at hand. We're going to have an exam on chapter 6 and 7, and then an exam on chapters 8, 9, and 10, and then our final exam. So three exams, and they are all proctored. The questions will be delivered through the D2L quiz tool, which is right here. If you click on here, you'll eventually see the three quizzes. Now, the questions are just delivered through those quizzes. You're not going to enter answers into those quizzes. You'll just leave the short answer boxes blank. All your work will be done on paper and then scanned in. Let's jump back over to content. Uh, right there, table of contents will take us back. And let's look more carefully at some of these other links. So my lab math, if you click on this, this will show you how to get to my math. It was formerly called my math lab. So my lab math, all these links, the most of which mo most of which you probably will just not use, but the ones that you'll use the most, you can get to your assignments, you can get to the e-text. The study plan is a place where you can go and do practice problems that don't count towards your grade. So if you're doing, um, if you're stuck on some concept, you can go in there and do lots, you can do unlimited practice. The multimedia library, very important resource. It's where all the videos are housed. So you can go in and see hundreds of videos for the book. And then there's some other ones down here that you can look through. If you have questions, you can ask. 15-week uh, course schedule. Let's go through this. So if you look at the 15-week course schedule, you can scroll through and see everything week by week. Let's stop, let's say, here at week three. So a typical week will have an image for the week that relates to the content that we're doing, then a description of each of the sections that we're covering, and then a summary. So you're going to have a homework assignment for all three sections and a quiz for each of the three sections. You'll be able to take each quiz twice and the best score counts. And you'll have unlimited attempts at every homework problem. So homework should be a pretty easy 100%. And now here it says discussions. There are two discussions in week three. 
Where do we find those discussions? Well, if you come up here, you'll click onto them right there. You can go there directly. Or if you look at the bottom of the week, so here it says that here is week two, there are two discussions, and there they are right there. So they're also in this content layout, this table of contents. So there's typically going to be two content questions that you do per week. And the idea is that you'll do a, uh, you'll take a photo of one of your problems that you solve by hand and you'll upload it and then I can comment on it. And keep in mind that the more complicated the problem is that you choose, the more instruction I'll be able to give you. Obviously, you can pick a simple problem and it's going to count, but uh, if you want me to comment and be able to give you more detailed feedback, pick a harder problem. It doesn't matter if you get it 100% right. The whole point of the discussions is that we can go back and forth if you have any sort of questions. So this is one way to look at the content through that 15-week layout. Or if you just want to look at one particular week, you can click on that week and that week will show up in uh, detail without all the other weeks attached to it. So here is week 12, three sections, three homeworks, three quizzes, two discussions. If you come down here, I will always have videos that I have made uh, that are connected to the content. And I can easily make other videos. If you have a topic that you really need to see how to do it visually, I can make a video very easily. And when you click on this individual week layout, you'll see the discussions blown up, not just the title of the discussion, but you'll actually see the whole discussion. So here are the two discussions. These video, these, uh, these images will come in slowly. Um, so you can click right here to get to the discussion, or you can come up here to see a layout of all the discussions and go in that way. Now let's take a look at the week one discussions. So first introduction, you're not going to post anything in D2L here. You're just going to click on this and that's going to take you to that Padlet that I already showed you. Um, so nothing to type in there. Here are the ones for this week though. There are all these other ones. One, two, three, four, four others. So this one, you need to be able to capture images. And so this is a link to a capture tool, the one I use frequently. It used to be called Jing, now it's called TechSmith Capture. The company is called TechSmith and it's their capture tool. I like it because you can do annotations on it really easily. Windows has a built-in snipping tool, which is you know totally fine, you can use that. Uh, it doesn't have the annotation flexibility that Capture has, so that's why I like to use the Capture one, but you can use whatever capture tool you want. If you have a Mac, Mac has a built-in capture tool, Command Shift 5. Uh, we'll bring up the capture tool for a Mac. Um, then we're going to look at the equation editor. So all of these discussions have a video on what you're supposed to do. So <clears throat> the equation editor in D2L has gotten really good. So you can make really nice math looking equations. Super nice. Uh, we'll do lots of graphing this semester. So the graphing software I use is Desmos. Very easy to use. It's a free piece of uh, web software. So watch the video. If you have questions, let me know. And then here's our one content video for the week, or content discussion for the week on angular velocity. And I've got two examples right here. Uh, so for any of these discussions to earn credit, all you do is take a photo of the work that you've done and you upload it. And now one important thing is that when you are, uh, when you capture your image, it's going to be really important to insert your image and not attach it. And so this video here will show you how to insert it and not just attach it. So make sure you know how to insert and not attach. So when you do it, when you're going to in, do a picture of a graph, you take your picture of your graph and then you insert it, you don't attach it. Inserting allows the image to be shown in line. It's not going to be a separate attachment that you have to click on. So that's very convenient. Uh, look, let's go back to content for a minute. Um, everything in the course is going to be in this table of contents. And if you scroll down below the week blowout, here are the how-to videos. And the how-to videos are the videos that I was just pointing out. So. Every how-to video is going to be here. This is how you navigate the course. This is where this video will go. 
how to navigate my math lab is right here. Here's the equation editor. Uh, here's the capture video. And then here is how you insert an image into a discussion, not attach it, how you insert it. And then the Desmos video. And then this is going to be an important video for those of you that are going to test from home. If you do your test from home, we use an online proctoring service called HonorLock. And you need to be able to take photos of all your work. So if, let's say you have six pages of work. You have to take photos of all six pages and merge them into a single document. This piece of free software, Cam Scanner, is one way you can do it iPhones have a built-in scanner in the Notes tool. There are other scanning apps for your phone, like Genius Scan. Or if you're old school, you could print them out and put them, th well, not print them out because you're writing them on paper. You could put them into a, a traditional scanning device and scan them into a single PDF. But it's going to be very important that you can some way take photos of X numbers of pieces of work and combine them into one PDF because those will have to be uploaded to the assignment tool. If we click on the assignment tool, here's where your supporting work will go for exam one. So you'll go to quizzes to take exam one and you eventually will see it. You don't see it now. I'll, I'll have this all updated once it's time for our first exam. That This is where you'll see your questions and then under the assignment tool, this is where you will upload your work. And there's a practice folder here. If you want to take photos of four pieces of scratch paper and practice uploading just to make sure that you're 100% sure how to do it before the first exam, that's totally cool. Let me show you some other things under quizzes. All of you will need to do this. This is a prerequisite quiz before you take an exam. Uh, so everyone will take this. And then anyone testing from home will have this honor lock practice quiz, which basically walks you through how to use honor lock. So that's going to be an important one for those of you testing at home, which is probably most of you. You can always choose to test in the testing center if you don't want to deal with the online proctoring. If you want a quiet space at one of the campuses, totally fine. It's up to you. Any questions? Let me know. Uh, let's see. So let's go back to content. And at the bottom of our table of contents here, you will see written exam information. So this is where all of the uh, study guides will be for the exams. So here is exam one information. So I've got a study guide and there's some unanswered questions in there. So then here's the answer key for those unanswered questions. Similarly for exam two and exam three, exam three being the final exam. All right, well, that is about it. Oh, I guess the grade book here. Let me say something about the grade book. A lot of our work is done in my math lab, so my math lab is actually going to have the most current grade book. I will pull grades over to D2L after each exam or periodically, uh, but, um, you, but you should be able to see your grades updated in D2L after each exam for sure, but they're always current in my math lab because my math lab has a built-in grade book for us to use. All right, that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck this semester.